This week, four Jewish souls were taken, lost to their families, to a people, and they were returned to their Maker. The circumstances were reminiscent of the worst of times. Innocent lives held in fear, taken hostage. Some 4,000 years ago, as it's recounted in this week's portion, an entire nation were taken as hostages. For a period of 210 years, the people of Israel suffered at the hands of Egyptian tyrants, Egyptian oppressors, and we see in the reading how the commencement of the confrontation occurs where Moses and Aaron come before Pharaoh and the confrontation leading to the plagues which eventually lead to the redemption. Citing this very confrontation, we note in how verse 26 of chapter 6, it refers to the two, Aaron and Moshe, as follows, who are Aaron and Moshe, this is Aaron and Moses. Whereas in the next verse, verse 27, it says the opposite, who Moshe and Aaron, this is Moses and Aaron. In the two different verses, they are given precedent before one another. In the first verse, Aaron, and in the second verse, Moses. Rashi comments on this and says that the reason for this is to show that they are both of absolute significance here. Both are equal, both are vital. When it comes to roles, it generally appears that Moses is the diplomat and the individual that also conveys the ultimatum to Pharaoh. Aaron, on the other hand, seems to be the translator, the transmitter of that information in such a way that Pharaoh is able to digest, is able to understand. Aaron is thus the mouthpiece of Moses. But how can we assert that Aaron is on the same level as Moses here? How can we say that Moses, who is the leader, the prophet of the generation, the head of Israel, the one that God communicates to directly as no other prophet in history was communicated to, how can we say that he and Aaron were on equal standing and that they were both pivotal and vital and of equal importance. But first, why is it that Moses and Aaron are interchanged in this way at this very moment when they confront Pharaoh and the commencement of the redemption begins? But perhaps therein lies the very answer to teach us the very process, the fundamental approach that leads to the redemption. Why? By showing the interchange between Moses and Aaron, and showing that there is no divide and that there is no status which separates them, what it brings across is the sense of unity of brothers that come before Pharaoh to confront this challenge for them and for their people. So this becomes the catalyst to the redemption. The qualities of unity and brotherhood, of love and devotion, is something that is supreme and superior leading to the greatest of outcomes. And on a deeper level, what Moses and Aaron are doing by showing this unity when they come before Pharaoh is in fact negating Pharaoh's very underpinning his philosophy and the societal belief in which Pharaoh lives. Because Pharaoh and Egyptian belief was of many gods, many forces within the cosmos, within the world. And therefore there is a hierarchy. Some are greater, some are lesser. And what Moses and Aaron came before Pharaoh in that show of unity was to show that there is a single God, a unified God, across the entire existence and such a force you cannot confront. So just as God's unity is the show of His ultimate strength, so too the strength of the Jewish people lie in their unity.